With all this hype surrounding Godzilla thanks to the success of Minus One, why not take a look at another beloved entry in the franchise and see if it's as good as we remember. It's time for Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Our film opens up with a group of people finding the corpse of King Ghidorah. It's gigantic, and it's got two heads. I don't really know how you missed the obvious next stump, but whatever, that's not a big deal. You mean King Ghidorah fought Godzilla? Yes, in the 20th century. Why yes, this movie does have time travel. Keep this in mind, I'm not done with it yet. After the title sequence, we see a UFO going over Japan. Then we cut to our main character, one of the main characters. I don't know, it's not all that clear. An author named Terasawa, his girlfriend? Asks him to write a piece on it, but he says nah and decides to interview a crazy man going off about dinosaurs. A long time ago, in a far off land, I saw a real life dinosaur. Gee, I wonder what dinosaur it was. Such a mystery. Also, why did it take so long for security to kick the crazy man out? Terasawa interviews the crazy man and he tells him the totally mysterious dinosaur saved him and his garrison from American forces. When our troops were stationed over on Lagos Island, the soldiers in my garrison all saw it. It protected us. Terasawa then asks a very important question. Well, was it ever reported? Is there a record of the event? Crazy man then responds. <laughs> no, there isn't. Nobody would have ever believed us. Oh boy, do I have a little mini rant saved up for this, but we'll have to put it on the back burner for now. Then we have a meeting with a bunch of government people. The small image is a picture of Godzilla who was driven there by Biolanti. All of these years, he's been kept alive and enervated by anti-nuclear bacteria. How has the anti-nuclear bacteria kept him alive? Keeping him enervated makes sense, given it can eat nuclear material, but wouldn't that be slowly killing him? Also, Biolante didn't drive him out to sea. The bacteria was what made him retreat. You could say that Biolante helped in that, but without the bacteria, Godzilla would still be rampaging. I know it's a small detail, but I bring it up because this movie has no regard for continuity as we'll find out later. Do you men believe that this UFO has something to do with Godzilla? What? Miki, just explain Godzilla's situation. How is the UFO relevant to it at all? Oh god, I'm hyper-focusing on things. Though, that's because the first ten minutes or so are rather dull. Important stuff does happen. Terasawa's investigation about the dinosaur does lead to an important point. It's just that the characters, well, they're all incredibly dull as well. For example, Terasawa himself is an author who got famous for writing science fiction, but he doesn't want to write that anymore. That could lead to something interesting. He wants to be more than what his fame led him on to be, but he just can't get any traction with his nonfiction. But when all the time travel shit happens and he finds his book about the history of Godzilla, he becomes a Godzilla historian, combining all the fantastical elements of Godzilla with the reality of it, describing his battles in detail while also recording all the events that led to them, or something like that. Instead, Terasawa is just kind of a wet sock. And because of that, I'm busy spurging out over this dinosaur expert being fractally wrong. Bones of a plesiosaur just off New Zealand. All scientists say dinosaurs are extinct. Plesiosaurs are not dinosaurs. They're not even archosaurs. Also, get that fucking Dimetrodon statue off your desk. Dimetrodon isn't even a reptile. It's closer to us than any dinosaur. <sighs> Anyways, Terasawa comes up with a brilliant hypothesis. The dinosaur turned into Godzilla. Well, yeah. Was Dr. Yamane's presentation not recorded in any way? Shouldn't it be a matter of public record of what Godzilla is? I don't see how this would be a new idea. Also, wouldn't more of Crazy Man's garrison come out and describe their experience after the original Godzilla attack to prove that they weren't crazy or something? Was there no investigation at all into Godzilla's creation in order to better understand what happened? But none of this is important. Monster movies are supposed to be stupid and make no sense, as I've been told. 
Terasawa finds out about another person that was on Lagos Island with crazy men named Shindo. The interview goes south until Terasawa brings up Godzilla might be the dinosaur that was on Lagos. Which brings us back to my previous point. Shouldn't Shindo know this, or at least suspect this? Unless you want to say Godzilla and what he possibly was is not taught in history and science class, not in the public knowledge. Which makes no sense given Godzilla burned Tokyo to the ground and would be a fascinating and unique animal scientists around the world would love to study. Shindo should at least have some idea. So, shouldn't he have given Terasawa the photos at the beginning? I mean, this revelation is what convinced Shindo to give Terasawa the photos in the first place. I know this seems small, but again, it's just another example of this movie having no respect for basic continuity. And it will only get worse. We cut to the UFO, and we finally meet the people who've been piloting it. Wilson, Glenn, and Emikano. I'm Japanese. I can tell. They're from the 23rd century. And now we have our time travel elements. We'll come back to it a bit later because I have a lot to say. The three of them teleport into a meeting with the Prime Minister. Sure, why not? They've come to alter events that will make Japan an uninhabitable wasteland. That involves, of course, Godzilla. Can it be true? Would Godzilla do that to us? Are... are you retarded? Do you not know your own history? Godzilla's need to absorb nuclear energy should be a matter of public record. It's unbelievable. Nothing about it is unbelievable. This should already be a massive concern you have. Fuck me. Anyways, the future people say that Godzilla must be gotten rid of, and Emikano gives them a book written by future Terasawa about the history of Godzilla. And now comes the part where all the dinosaur stuff becomes relevant. They're going to travel back in time to 1944 and remove Godzilla before he's exposed to radiation and mutates, which will remove him from history. I'm sure many of you can see a very fatal flaw in this plan, but for those that don't, Keep it in mind, I am not done with it yet. They're going to go back to Lagos Island to get the dinosaur. Then what they'll do is teleport the dinosaur back here. Why would they teleport the dinosaur to the present? Why not to the interior of Antarctica or the moon? The future people recruit Terasawa, Dinosaurman, and Miki to go with them to the past, and I'm sure they'll all be very, very helpful. They meet up with Wilson to go over his plan, as well as some very hard and logical rules of the time travel. It's simply because the same person can't be at the same point in time more than once, meaning one of them would have to vanish. And that's it. Yep, the only other rule is that changing the past changes the future. Sometimes. We'll get into that a bit later, but I think most of you have an idea of where this is all going. And yes, it is as bad as you think. We are then introduced to the Dorats, who will very obviously turn into King Ghidorah. The crew then time travels, and when they land, they are bombarded with artillery from the American destroyers. M11 goes to scope things out, and... <laughs> oh my god, it looks so goofy. <laughs> oh, right, M11 is a Terminator. I forgot to mention it. Anyways... The Japanese and American forces begin fighting before the dinosaur arrives and drives off the Americans, but sustains lethal injuries. To be positive, for once, the design of the dinosaur is quite good. It's very simple, but that works in its favor. It looks enough like Godzilla while also looking like a real dinosaur. Its posture is wrong for a theropod, but that's understandable. There's really only so much you can do with a guy in a suit. After Shindo and his garrison say goodbye to the dinosaur, M11 teleports it to the future. Emikano also lets the Dorats out onto the island so they can be mutated into King Ghidorah before they all arrive back in the future, and it's confirmed Godzilla was erased from history. So Godzilla's gone from history forever. Okay, where to even start with this nonsense? How about the obvious? 
If Godzilla was a race from history, then the crew would have never gone back in time to do so because no one would know what Godzilla even is. And if they don't know what Godzilla is, then Wilson wouldn't have come up with a plan in the first place to get rid of him. As well as some other nonsense I'll get into later. But perhaps the most nonsensical plot hole in all of this... Why would anyone think removing the Lagos Island dinosaur would erase Godzilla from history when it's a different Godzilla from the one that appeared in 1984? Remember, the first film is canon. Godzilla dies at the end of that movie and a new one shows up 30 years later. Fuck me, this is so goddamn stupid. So King Ghidorah begins his attack and sure, it looks cool. I'm always down for some good old practical effects, but the spectacle loses its value when all the more important aspects of the film are so completely broken or non-existent. We go back to the future people and we have some interesting exchanges. What do you want, to destroy the whole of Japan? All except Tokyo. Then we'll show the Japanese the proper way to rebuild their country. So, Wilson's plan is to use King Ghidorah to destroy all of Japan except Tokyo so he can show them how to rebuild it. Why bother with the time travel when you could just teleport the existing Godzilla to the moon or a random part in space and then expose the Dorats to radiation in the current year? Save yourself quite a bit of time and effort if you ask me. And then there's Emi Kano, who seemed to be in on the creating of King Ghidorah, but not using it to destroy the majority of Japan? What the fuck were you expecting by leaving the Dorats on an island that was going to be exposed to radiation? You're fucking stupid, Emikano. We came here to warn these people. We came back here to tell them their country was in danger. Oh boy, you better keep this in mind. I am certainly not done with it yet. Emikano goes to visit Terasawa to tell him the truth about the future. The Equal Environment Earth Union? Its sole purpose is to equalize the power of all nations on Earth. Later on, Japan will become even stronger. With all this wealth and great power, it'll buy up nations. South America and Africa. So all nations are equal in power, but not Japan who have bought entire continents. That makes total sense. Anywho, the story of Godzilla destroying Japan was a lie. So this line, We came here to warn these people. We came back here to tell them their country was in danger. Makes no sense because you knew it was all bullshit. You knew that Wilson's plan was to destroy Japan before it became the great superpower. You were the one that set the Dorats up to be mutated into King Ghidorah. And the worst part in all of this is that there's no explanation given as to why Emikano did all of this. She wasn't brainwashed or blackmailed or was trying to sabotage Wilson by pretending to go along with everything. Literally nothing at all to explain her actions. She's a terrible person and it's never acknowledged. And this scene only gets worse as the movie goes on. I'm skipping ahead a bit, but Emi Kano goes back to the future and we get this line. But a corrupt nation such as that one doesn't deserve help. It was destroyed by a monster. If Japan's future was altered due to Godzilla's resurrection, then Emi Kano's knowledge of Japan would be different since they're no longer the biggest superpower on Earth. And if they're not a giant, uncontrollable supernation bigger than the Earth Union itself, then Wilson has no reason to go back in time to change anything. So they've come here to destroy Japan before all this happens. Meaning, the future people shouldn't even exist in the past anymore since the reason for them going into the past doesn't exist. And thus we have the Tismic Ouroboros that is time travel with no hard rules. A plot that eats itself into unfunctionality. Holes so gargantuan, nothing can escape their pull. The complete disrespect of continuity resulting in a writing disaster. And the worst part about all of this is the characters are so dull and substance devoid that you can't even forgive some of the complete nonsense that's happened. And we're only halfway through the movie. But if we give in to any of their requests, we may just end up being used as their puppets. I mean, yeah, but currently you don't have much of a choice. The lives of your citizens are on the line, and there's not much you can really do. Well, except resurrect Godzilla using a secret nuclear sub, but as it turns out, Godzilla has already been resurrected. You say that you feel Godzilla? Yes, whenever I close my eyes, I see him as clearly as if you were walking right in front of me. 
Oh, right. Miki is a psychic. Those exist. I understand if none of you remember Miki in this movie because she doesn't really do anything. After definitively finding out that Godzilla has indeed been resurrected, Terasawa decides to go tell Shindo about it. Along the way, he gets into the goofiest car chase with M11. <coughs> How is he able to keep his foot on the pedal in that position? <laughs> I know there weren't a lot of good ways to show off super speed at the time, but it's still really funny. M11 takes Emikano back to the ship. Tell me, did you really think you'd be able to get away with what you were doing? Then why didn't you stop me? Because we wanted to see how the Japanese government would react. <laughs> that exchange makes no sense. Emikano wasn't involved with the meeting of the government officials. You know what? Fuck it. I don't care about this ass dialogue anymore. It bores me. Emikano reprograms M11, and I really do have to wonder about the competence of Wilson. You know she went off on her own to talk to Serozawa. You know she has an investment in her country not being destroyed. She is a liability. Letting her roam around by herself, allowing her to potentially sabotage you is really fucking stupid. The newly reprogrammed M11 then takes Terasawa to the future people's ship before the new and improved Godzilla rises from the ocean. That used to be the dinosaur from Lagos. Now Godzilla's returned to Japan. Thank you for pointing out the obvious. I'm sure the audience needed a reminder of things they already know. Back with the future people and Wilson is lamenting the fact that Godzilla is back. It really didn't matter just what location we teleported the dinosaur to. The second birth of Godzilla was an unavoidable event. That's not true, though. I've given several places earlier in this review that you could have sent him where he would have remained dead. But this script is fuck all confusing, and most of it is written like it was from a fourth grader. That's because it was. The fact that you didn't think of it is a skill issue. Wilson sends King Ghidorah to fight Godzilla, and... I still get a big smile on my face. Good monster action will always, in some way, make me feel like a stupid child again. Back with Terasawa, as he, M11, and Emikano plant explosives on the time machine. Oh boy, it's like letting Emikano roam around as she pleased was a terrible idea. Terasawa blows up what I assume is the thing controlling Ghidorah, and they head up to Wilson and Glenn. You've betrayed the Union! You don't say... It's not like she was very upfront with how she feels about your deception and has every reason to betray you, you little clown boy. Godzilla's going to destroy the country of Japan himself. This new Godzilla is unfriendly, and he's going to destroy your country. Oh yeah, because the other two were the spitting image of friendly. The future people consider their mission a success because Godzilla will destroy Japan anyways, even though Wilson wanted to rebuild it. Then we'll show the Japanese the proper way to rebuild their country. So, no, not a success. You bastard! Oh. Oh. You have a gun. Shoot him. This fight scene is quite embarrassing. When Terasawa goes to try and help Emikano, two androids stop him so he kicks them. Even if he didn't know they were androids, he has a gun. God, you're all stupid. Anyways, M11 comes in and saves the day, and they teleport the time machine to Godzilla, and he destroys it, killing both Glenn and Wilson. I'll give a slight compliment to the effect of them getting vaporized. It looks quite good, especially for the time. Godzilla defeats Ghidorah and sets his sights on Japan. Wow, it's not the dinosaur we knew. Just look at that thing. It's not going to be friendly to us. Again, when was he ever friendly? Godzilla, not the dinosaur he used to be, has only ever caused death and destruction upon Japan in this continuity. Even if we do factor in pre-mutation Godzilla, at best he was ambivalent towards the Japanese soldiers because they weren't the ones who were shooting at him. You all should have seen this outcome once Ghidorah was dead. Speaking of Ghidorah, they all hatch a plan to stop Godzilla. Do you think that King Ghidorah could help us? Do you think you could revive it in the 23rd century? And bring it back to the 20th century? There's 
One issue with this that I'll get into later, but I do find it really funny that in order to stop Ghidorah, they needed Godzilla. And now that Godzilla is doing what should have been expected, they need Ghidorah to stop him. Godzilla's rampage brings him to Shindo. Both man and beast confront each other again. Godzilla seemingly remembering Shindo, who has resigned himself to this fate. There's much one could infer from this scene. Godzilla remembering how he was left to suffer on Lagos, and having immense resentment and anger. Said anger overtaking him and blasting the building. Shindo understanding this, that he did fail his savior in some way, and would not at all be upset or blame him for doing this. If he is to die, then it should be by the thing that saved him and allowed him to become as successful as he was. It's the only scene with any kind of substance to it. And it's a shame that's buried underneath all this fucking nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, Emikano returns with the upgraded Mecha King Ghidorah. Let's rewind to when our only real hard rule of time travel was given. It's simply because the same person can't be at the same point in time more than once, meaning one of them would have to vanish. That means one of two things should happen. Either Mecha King Ghidorah should vanish, or the dormant King Ghidorah on the ocean floor should vanish. If the former happens, then Godzilla continues unimpeded and destroys everything. If the latter happens, then there's no foundation for Mecha King Ghidorah to be built, it disappears as well, and Godzilla continues unimpeded. But what's another plot hole onto this already blazing dumpster inferno, am I right? The preceding fight is pretty good, much like the previous encounter, the choreography is simple, and this is the era of the beam spam, but it's fairly competent with some cool highlights. Mecha King Ghidorah restrains Godzilla, and they both drop into the ocean. Amikano fucks back off into the future, and Godzilla wasn't really stopped or hindered all that much, which is a surprise to no one. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is considered by many to be one of the best Godzilla films ever made. This is wrong. Very wrong. If anything, it should sit with some of the worst. Most of the characters are utterly devoid of anything substantive. Shindo is the only one. His love of dinosaurs, as shown in his office, stems from the fact of one saving his life. The potential guilt he felt for having to leave it on the island to die alone and in pain. There's honestly not enough Shindo in the movie. We don't even really get that much about how he feels about his savior becoming Japan's destroyer. He just kind of ignores it for the most part. Still, he is the best character in the movie. Terasawa had the potential to be great as I laid out in the beginning, but ended up being a piece of drywall with the personality of wet cardboard. The villains are immensely fucking dumb. Their entire defeat is the result of their inability to see the most obvious betrayal imaginable, and their plan is incredibly self-destructive. If they remove Godzilla from history, then they would never go back in time to do so, because they would have never heard of Godzilla, because he never fucking existed in the first place. Emi Kano doesn't make any goddamn sense. She acts like she doesn't know what Wilson's real plan was, except she knew that the entire thing was a fucking lie from the start because she knew what his real plan actually was. No one ever addresses why she went along with it in the first place, by the way, completely and totally complacent within the lie. She was the one who left the Dorat on Lagos Island to be mutated. She is a terrible person and a fucking dumbass. The time travel is handled with all of the care of an exploding orphanage. Continuity is thrown out the window and into a wood chipper, making plot holes so large they annihilate everything in their way. Honestly, the only consistently good things about this movie are how M11 is handled. As a robot, he is stronger and faster than the average person, and they get this across very well. And for the most part, the monster action and effects are pretty good. But that's nowhere near enough to even come close to fixing any of these massive issues all of which leave the movie as one of the most incoherent messes in the entire franchise. Thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to get to 3k subs by the end of this year, so if you're new and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. If you're feeling extra spicy, give me a sub on Patreon as well. See you all in the next video.